One year ago, there was no guarantee this day would ever happen for Anthony Catalano. I just felt like I had a muscle pull just in my leg. He was having a hard time. I mean, we didn't realize why, and at times his stroke was a little odd, and they couldn't figure out what was going on, but we didn't think anything of it. When I stopped swimming, it did get better. It got better. It seemed like it went away, so it was kind of like, okay, there you go, it's gone. But his mom noticed that something was still wrong just two weeks later. She told me that it looked like I was an S, that I was just so curved and walking that I was just so off alignment and everything. The excruciating pain in his leg had returned, so his parents took him to the doctor to run some tests. He says, you know, I think it's osteomyelitis, you know, which is an infection. Let's just hope for that. Just go home and pray for that. I was put on antibiotics for an infection that I never had. So I actually felt horrible in school, falling asleep in school because I was so much on antibiotics and everything. I also found out that I actually had a broken hip. It's technically a broken hip, but it was my, the ball and socket on the femur was cracked. Catalano spent the next three weeks in and out of Rush Hospital. Multiple MRIs and bone biopsies failed to clear up the situation. That quickly changed when one doctor made a startling discovery. He said, you know, I went up into his hip. He goes, you know, his hip is like a sponge, you know. But we, I kind of knew it. In the back of my mind, I knew something was just not right. A few days later, Catalano was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, a type of cancer that affects white blood cells. Thank God. Now you're probably saying, what is that? What do you mean by that? Well, because I was going through all those tests and all those results and all that stuff and nothing was coming out, it was actually a sign of relief because they actually found out what was wrong. He never really once complained about it, and he never really complained that this was happening to him. He never had that reaction at all. Fighting a disease was nothing new to the family. Catalano's mom is a breast cancer survivor. Someone had put it to me at work. They said, you know, Kathy, I kind of thought about this. You know, maybe you were supposed to have cancer, so that way you can help your son cope with it. And I think back, and I think that's so true. Obviously, you don't want to go through it at all. Um, but having a person that's gone through it and who knows what's going on and knows what to do is a lot easier. Yet there were still things she wasn't prepared for. To take, you know, a syringe and have to inject your son, that was very, very hard for me. Very hard, because I felt like I was causing him pain. I think as a parent, having, watching any one of your kids, boy, girl, doesn't make a difference, son or daughter, to go through that is very, very difficult. The initial response Catalano received from some of his classmates didn't make the situation any easier. I did have guys fake open the door for me and then slam them in my face when I was on crutches. So that, that happened and those were kind of like, ah, there's nothing much I can do about it, just crutch away. So that's what I did most of the times. There's two ways you can handle this. A, you can feel sorry for yourself, you know, and think, why me? You know, why am I being punished? Um, you can blame other people, or you can take control of something. So pick something and take control of it. And that's just what Catalano did. While undergoing chemotherapy at the hospital, a routine event inspired him to take action. You know, they come around with the library card, and remember it, it, the color purple, you know, and going through the DVDs, searching through all of them, Barney, ABCs, I'm like, okay, obviously I'm not going to watch this stuff. So there was nothing good on the cart, so I couldn't watch anything. He decided to take matters into his own hands. Following his seventh and final round of chemo last June, Catalano proposed a bold project idea to his Eagle Scout leader. That's a, that's a really good idea. When I, we first started talking about the project, what he wanted to do and everything else, I thought he was biting off a lot more than he could chew. Catalano wanted to spruce up the living conditions for other teenagers living at Rush Hospital. Besides providing more age-appropriate DVDs, he also wanted to give them something from the heart. My aunt, um, who passed away uh, six years or seven years ago, um, she, did, she had cancer, she came down with cancer, but she gave to all of her nieces and nephews um, a blanket, a fleece blanket. So I thought, well, she did that for us. 
that's something definitely that I can do for someone else who's less fortunate than I am. His goals were to make 50 fleece blankets, collect 100 DVDs, and raise $1,500. But an outpouring of community support helped shatter those benchmarks. I'd come over here, they'd have a whole basement full of blankets. Like, there was no walking room. <laughs> they'd make little pathways, and it's just amazing what he did. And that just shows how generous he is. It was about blankets and collecting DVDs. There was no question about that but it turned into much more than that because the parish really rallied behind them and the people were incredibly supportive. Everyone was so determined not to make one, two, maybe four blankets because somehow down the line someone had been touched with someone that had cancer and sometimes you just don't know what to do, you don't know what to say. So by doing this, I think it was healing for everyone. I think it was something that the community needed. In four months, Catalano ended up with 490 blankets 155 DVDs, and more than $4,000. He used that leftover money to buy iTunes gift cards for the sick teenagers. It's amazing. I mean, when I, from when I saw the project start through the finished product, is one of our top projects we've ever had. He knows what he stands for, and he never lets anyone get in the way of that. And that's why he will always be an inspiration to me. <laughs> Catalano went into remission a month after starting on his project. Looking back at it now, it almost seemed like a way to cope with it, you know? Why make it me when I can help so many other people who have it worse than me? He is scheduled to start classes at DeVry University in July. But before then, the Make-A-Wish Foundation is rewarding his hard work by sending him and his family to Rome for an all-expenses-paid two-week vacation. A gift well-deserved. Matt Michaels, Northwestern News Network.